Happy St. Patrick's Day! Because that's the day I'm recording this, not the day that this is actually going to come out. That's why I'm wearing green. But also, um, this is a little intro. In case you were wondering about the announcement, I've been talking about uh, the last few videos and you didn't see the previous video that I posted, I'll provide an annotation right here. So go check that out or go look in the description below. Because again, it's going to affect Discovering Doctor Who going forward. In my opinion, it's a good thing. Uh, well, actually, it's going to be affecting public and media in general, but this intro has gone on long enough. Let's start the episode. Hello everyone, I'm Papa Ken and welcome to episode 71 of Discovering Doctor Who. Yes, 71, because apparently I'm not numbering the episodes where I refer to just the minisodes. Although I think I might have done that for one before, I can't remember. But anyway, that's besides the point. Today the episode I'm going to be talking about is Asylum of the Daleks. Getting the first, or not first, getting the seventh season of Doctor Who off to a start. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. I have a few thoughts, but I'm wanting to get through this... Uh, fairly quick because I don't, I, I don't know it's like uh, hopefully I can completely form a complete opinion about this episode as I do this but let's start with my favorite parts of this episode starting with the pawns are still the pawns and I was just very happy to see especially after the end of the prequels um, pawn life the way that ended on a, a fairly dark note well not dark but a, a very serious note as opposed to the rest which had been quite comedic and funny and then we find out what's going on between the two, like they're divorcing right off the bat of the episode, and they're at least separated at that point. But in the end, we find out what all's going on, uh, which I'm, go I'm going to refer to a little bit later in this video. But we find out what all is going on with them, and, uh, you know, the circumstances behind the divorce, the, view, the views that Rory had, that you know, thinking that he loved um, Amy more than Amy loved him. And just the, the fact that it all came together and, you know, they're still together. You know, like, you know, they work through things. I just thought I, I, that was really nice and just something I, I really like to see. I am going to comment on that, like I said, a little bit more as this goes along. But let's move on to my second favorite part of this episode, which was Oswin Oswald. And I, I don't know. I just... I. I found the character to be really enjoyable. I mean, from the beginning where she's just this very qu quirky, fast-talking, awesome person, to the end when we find out that the dramatic reveal that, oh my god, she's been completely converted, turned into a Dalek, and I, I don't know, it's just like that, that, the entire story revolving around her in this episode was just amazing, and I found her to be, like, her personality was just phenomenal. It was, I, I feel like it's a really good, it would be a really good match for a companion of the Doctor, which is appropriate for the, basically what I'm going to be asking at the question of an episode here, but I'll be getting to that later, obviously. But moving on from Oswin Oswald, the, which, uh, uh, one last comment, I, is Oswin like an actual first name, or is it just like something that they came up with for this show? Because I've, I've honestly never heard the name Oswin. I'm pretty sure I've heard it as a last name, but not a first name for anyone. So yeah, just uh, let me let me know about that because <laughs> it's seriously the first time I've ever heard it again as a first name. Now moving on, my third favorite part of this episode was the Dalek puppets or uh, just the puppets. I don't know exactly how you would refer to them, but it's like just like that that cringing feeling where it's like you hear neck snapping or bone snapping, and then all of a sudden, like the Dalek probe or the view viewer sticks out of the person's head. And, I don't know, I just found that to be really intriguing that, you know, they can take living people and essentially completely take over their bodies, and even dead bodies, essentially creating controlled zombies of a sort. And I just, I, I mean, I, I don't know if anything like that has ever been used in Doctor Who before, I mean, even in the classic era, but I just found it to be something really crazy and like a really interesting adaptation of the Daleks. Something that, uh, I mean, you know, it, again, if they haven't been used even in the classic era, just something very, like, sort of an evolution for the Daleks. Be although they hate 
um, you know, all other living forms, they take over those forms in order to adapt and uh, it basically it... I, I, I'm trying to think of the right word, but basically it enhances their battle tactics. Because, I mean, think about it. W using that, Daleks could go anywhere. Could go anywhere. Hiding within these bodies or even other alien being bodies and just all of a sudden just wreak havoc. I just find that really intriguing and kind of terrifying, to be completely honest. But moving on from there, my fourth and final favorite part of this episode, eggs. And it came in two parts, obviously. First of which was the eggs that, you know, uh, Oswin was using to make the souffles, supposedly. But before that, you know, what was going on there was revealed, we get we get a hint. And it's, it's, in a way, a blatant hint, but I honestly wasn't thinking about it at first until I thought back on the episode. But when Rory comes upon the comatose Daleks, and then one of them starts saying, eggs, eggs. And Rory thinks that, you know, he's referring to the little uh, ball that is what had fallen off of its body or its armor. And then obviously eggs turns to exterminate. And that was just, uh, I mean, th th that moment with Rory was really, I, I, I thought it was really well executed. But he, when we were with Oswin, and all of a sudden, her Dalek self starts doing the exact same thing. Eggs. 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 Terminate. And, I mean, it was just so, it was basically her still human mind fighting against the programming of the Daleks to basically keep herself, uh, well, stay her self mentally, even though everything else about her was gone. It was like, it was sort of a... a I don't know if PTSD response would be the right way, or it's sort of like, you know, blocking out the reality. I, I, I don't know, it's... <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about there exactly, but I just found it to be really intriguing the way that they did that. So that was, honestly, some absolutely excellent writing, in my opinion. Now, moving on from there, my... It's time to get into my annoyances with this episode. Um, some of which, I'm sure, will probably vary from person to person. For me, they were pretty... the uh, two of them were pretty significant, the other not so much. Let's start off with my first annoyance of the episode, which is the circumstances of the split. The split with Amy and Rory. A and here are my issues with it. Well, first of all, yeah, basically the only build-up to this that we got was the fifth minisode of the Pond Life episodes, which, you know, even at that point, we're like, okay, they had a big fight, what's going on here? And then in the episode, like, it starts off with them signing papers to get a divorce, not talking to each other at all. And, I mean, as far as story writing elements go, normally, that's perfectly fine. But then when we find out, like, what caused the split, what caused the massive issue, what it is, is definitely a significant problem. Um, or uh, it can be a significant problem for a relationship. Uh, Amy finds out that she can't have children, knowing that Rory wants to have children, and it was because of what happened at Demon's Run. Uh, or, well, they don't know exactly what happened, but, you know, those circumstances caused her to not be able to have kids. And, I don't know, I, I just feel like, again, two things. There was no foreshadowing at all, like there was no indication that anything like that was going on. It's like they, there hadn't, during any of the Pond Life episodes, we could have gotten just a little bit of, you know, some sort of indication that something was wrong. Because it literally just went from goofy, 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 super serious. And then, uh, I don't know, I just, I feel like more of that could have been discussed, or even just some side comments, other than just in the beginning of the episode, Amy and Rory acting like they hate each other, giving no indication as to them, you know, talking through anything, which, uh, you know, most couples would do, or at least the way that this couple is portrayed, they would definitely do, especially considering everything they've gone through. Um, and, uh, uh, sorry, I lost my track, lost track there for a second. Um, and, and then, it's just, I feel like the subject matter, as important as that is, I feel like it's something that shouldn't have just been, as much as I like the fact that they did resolve it, that they talked things through in this episode, I feel like it's something that should have been 
expanded throughout at least one more episode. Like, give the situation time to breathe. Give us, as the audience who just learned about this, more time to process what happened to Amy than just the mention near the end of the episode during the time that they are reconciling. So, yeah, I mean, again, the situation, like, what happened to Amy is horrible, absolutely horrible, and it's something that I'm glad they were able to work through. But with, I mean, from, from my perspective, they're a couple that wouldn't just split up over being infertile. That would be something that, yes, it, would, it could cause problems. Yeah, it could lead to tension. That could possibly lead to a divorce. But I, it, they just don't seem like the kind of couple that would just split up over that. Again, after everything they've been through in this show, it seems like something that they would be able to discuss, or they would call on the doctor to try and discuss those things. I mean, it was obvious that Rory was able to call the doctor and talk to him on the phone during one of the Pond Life episodes. So why not, like, you know, if it's something they think he might be involved in, or he might be able to help, why didn't they call? <laughs> I don't know, just, but, uh, again, just super long story short. My first annoyance is the circumstances of the split, and to a degree, the fact that it was resolved so quickly, although I'm glad it did get resolved. But moving on, my second annoyance with this episode is that the Daleks were just kind of there. Now again, it led to that incredibly dramatic moment with uh, Oswin when we find out what had happened to her, and in my opinion, the fact that it's a Dalek asylum is still, you know, that was interesting. That was a really cool setting. But then the regular Daleks, the sane Daleks, so to speak, there was, they were just kind of there. I feel like it could have been any other enemy or, or it could have even been an asylum of all kinds of different species of crazy species, crazy members of their species. I don't know, it just felt like they were there and I, I, I don't know. It for, Daleks aren't supposed to have any other emotions than hate. So how is it that every single Dalek on that ship was afraid? I, again, I just don't understand, especially if all of those Daleks are capable of firepower. It's obvious that the Daleks in the Asylum, at least most of them, need to power up some. I, I don't know, just, the, 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 I don't feel like the Daleks overall were utilized well at all in this episode. Again, with the exception of the Daleks in the Asylum and Oswin. Uh, so yeah, that, that was pretty disappointing overall in my opinion. I don't know completely how they could have done it better, but I just felt like it wasn't done well. So yeah. Alright, now moving on, my third and final annoyance with this episode was the prequel. Admittedly. Now, it, it does admittedly work as a nice setup for the episode, but rather than showing how the Doctor got contacted and how he found out how to uh, find the person that was disguised as a Dalek, it, it felt pretty unnecessary because in the beginning of the actual episode, you know, the Doctor mentions that not everyone can contact him uh, that you know, or get in touch with him that easily, which is debatable considering a lot of people can just call him. But I feel like the prequel could have been the perfect setup for giving us, without actually spoiling the problem, giving us some sort of indication of what Amy and Rory are going through. Could have been like, you know, each, like in the little prequel, like, you know, it could be cut into two halves, one of which shows the Rory, or shows Rory in the situation that he's feeling, and then Amy in the situation she's feeling. I just, again, I feel like that prequel could have been utilized so much better, and that's why it's my third annoyance. Um, in my opinion, all of those are fairly significant. I, arguably, the third one could be just a nitpick, but the other two, from my perspective, are pretty significant to the episode overall. Alright, but moving on from there, as far as my track of the episode goes, it was really close between two of them, but the one I finally decided on was The Terrible Truth, which is the music that plays over when Oswin finds out, or it's like, she lets herself realize the actual truth, and when the doctor points uh, out to her what's actually going on, just like that entire three-ish minute music score is <clears throat> just phenomenal. It's powerful, 
and sad. It just goes through so many dark emotions that it just, it really, it was just really good. Now my runner-up basically, which I'll call it the honorable mention, was Amy and Rory together. And that's just because it was just this nice, pleasant, very, again, sad, but beautiful song that just worked along really well with what was being discussed in the episode at the time. And that actually brings me to <clears throat> my quote of the episode, which I'm not going to read out, but again, if you've seen the episode, you're going to know what I'm talking about. It's the entire dialogue of the pawns resolving the situation. Everything that's said, the back and forth in that particular scene is just, it's so well acted and it's so well done that, again, despite the fact that I feel like it should have been drawn out at least another episode so we could process what was going on, the way that Karen Gillan and Arthur Darvill were, uh, acted in that scene, the way they portrayed the emotions and everything that was going on was just amazing. And every, literally every line in that scene was excellent so it would do it, it would do the scene absolutely no justice for me to try and read it out so I may provide a link to like the quote down in the description below but yeah it was just really good and the reason why it's my quote or quotes of the episode now as for my overall final thoughts despite my annoyances which I again find to be pretty significant I really like this episode I, I it's questionable whether or not I'll feel it's my favorite. I mean, again, this is just my first episode of the season itself, not including the Christmas episode. But it's... I don't, I don't know. It's just very... It was really powerful. Uh, taking into consideration the scene with Amy and Rory, that one major scene, and then the reveal with Oswin, I just, it's, it's, it's really hard to find ways to not like the episode. Again, it's, you know, you could be, or I could be upset with the way the Daleks were portrayed, but overall, the episode wasn't really about those Daleks. They were just a utility for the story. The, the story revolved around Oswin and, uh, well, one part of the story revolved around Oswin, and the other part revolved around Amy and Rory. And as a whole, um... Yeah, I just found the episode to be quite effective and just a really good one. Again, we'll see how I feel about it overall as I go through some of the uh, future episodes coming up. But, yeah, that's just my feelings on it overall. Now, everyone, uh, please do let me know your feelings on this episode. I know that Season 7 has been known to be quite controversial, especially the second half, whereas the first half seems to be more favored by most people, but do let me know your overall thoughts, uh, some of the things that you liked about the episode, what you didn't like, uh, you know, possibly your favorite quote. If the dialogue between Amy and Rory wasn't your particular favorite part, what were some other great lines? Uh, I'm sure that most of them could probably come from Oswin, because again, she was a very fast talker, fast thinker, really liked that character. Um, but moving on, before we get into uh, closing this video up, I'm sorry about, I keep scratching my nose, it's just uh, allergies. <laughs> but my question of the episode is, how is Oswin related to the future companion Clara? Now I know that it kind of ruins it, the fact that I'm, you know, I'm not seeing this as it's released because we don't know Clara is a person. We don't know Clara is going to be a future companion, or wouldn't have at that point. But knowing that, I'm really curious as to how they're related, or maybe if they're even the same person in some form because Clara, uh, I mean, they're played by the same person. I can't remember the, the actress's name offhand, but they're played by the same person, so obviously there has to be some sort of relation there, especially considering what happened with Martha and her cousin from the previous season <laughs> that appeared in that one episode and died. But yeah, I'm just really curious about that. Uh, my personal thought is maybe they are, they're either related in some form, or they are literally the same person. Who knows? You all may know, but I don't at this point. But alright, everyone, thank you very much for joining me for the 71st episode of Discovering Doctor Who. Again, if you haven't uh, seen the video about the announcement, click here. I'll put an annotation and a, a link down in the description below. In my opinion, it's really good news. I'd love to hear what you all think if you haven't seen it already. And uh, until next time, everyone, which in which we will be, or I will be discussing dinosaurs on a spaceship, which seems like it could be a very interesting episode, to say the least. Uh, 
I'll see you all next time on the next Discovering Doctor Who. I'm not holding my Sonic. Uh, I don't know where it is at the moment. So yeah, anyway. Until next time, everyone. Alonzi!